Tato, thanks for having me here. Um, so, goodness me, sex. Uh, where do I begin? <laughs> um, uh, it's a bit early, really, but uh, when I was... Um, it's never too early for sex. Um, it's going to get a bit like this today, I'm afraid. It is sex, after all. Um, how do I begin? Well, when two people really like each other... Um, <laughs> it's ubiquitous, sex. And it sells. Uh, Sigmund Freud is reportedly suppo uh, supposed to have said, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. And uh, I get that, but um, slow motion, a woman in slow motion eating an ice cream and rolling her eyes in ecstasy is more than the sum of its parts. Or is that just me? It could be just me. But I'm a director, right? And so everything is deliberate when you're shooting things like that. It's always in mind. Um, and, you know, have you heard this? We live in the 21st century. I've just done, I was asked to do this talk because I did Chicago. You'd be great to talk about sex. You just did Chicago. Okay, it was quite a sexy production and, um, I, and deliberately so and I made some decisions to get there. But um, when I got to thinking about this, I realised I've actually done quite a bit of sex, if you see what I mean. <laughs> Um, and I go back, right back to Hercules and right through, and especially Spartacus. And so um, what I found interesting is where is this line? Is there a line? All through the Chicago rehearsals, Shona McCulloch, my choreographer and I, we'd do this routine, maybe the sex dolls, I don't know, more later. We'd do this routine and I'd look at Shona and I'd say, uh, is that the line? She'd go, no, that's not the line. Okay, we haven't crossed the line. What is the line? It isn't pornography, it's HBO. You know what I mean? <laughs> what is the line? How do, you, how do you define it? And, you know, you can download an app now called Lick Me. <laughs> Have you heard about this? It's to train you to do better cunnilingus <laughs> on a cell phone. <laughs> I'm just saying. What does Siri feel about it? <laughs> she must be exhausted. Um, so... You know, even, even uh, Step Dave, which I just directed recently, there's a sexual thing in there. One of the characters, her storyline is about being desperate for a shag. This is at 8.30, and I'm just saying, it's just a very interesting, where does this line exist for us? When I did Hercules, one of the things about Hercules was that my character was like a playboy of the ancient world. Um, even though Hercules was the big guy with all, you know, he was a bit restrained. But me, I had girls all the time. Girls, 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 in that sort of American girl next door kind of way. It was all very nice. We couldn't show flank, this bit. You couldn't show side boob. You couldn't show butt crack. This is all on, you get this on a piece of paper when you're directing. No side boob, no butt crack. Um, <laughs> You couldn't do this, but cleavage, oh my God. I mean, those shows, Xena and Hercules, gave the Wonder Bra industry in Auckland a huge lift. <laughs> I'm serious. I, I, on, set, on set one day, I was directing an episode of Xena, and um, this actress who I knew, who's a, who I held in my arms when she was a baby, <laughs> um, came up to me, she's about in her mid-twenties, and she went, Michael, Michael, look, I have tits, <laughs> like this. <laughs> And she did. Um, <laughs> enormous breasts, uh, uh, pushed, unbelievably pushed up. Like, but I couldn't, I did a scene where I was in bed with someone, I got out, ran to the window, you could see my bum, no, no, we can't have that, got to cut that. But then there's this sort of big bum in your face, I guess, not to Desmond Morris. Um, so I thought, what is the line here? You know, it's like a really, you can see what I'm saying, it was, it was really in your face, so to speak. Um, uh, and it just, it amused me that it was like cleavage for Africa, you couldn't do any of these things. Um, and I never got a straight answer. I never got a straight answer as to why we could do that. And then Spartacus comes along. Holy moly. <laughs> now I'm going to 
take you through some of the Spartacus stuff because that's, it's really interesting. Well, I thought it was. Because I was told by a producer on Spartacus, when you think, here's my, here's my advice, Michael, when you think the camera should look away, make it keep looking. <laughs> the first sex scene I had to direct <laughs> on Spartacus, and there was some, have, you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. There was lovemaking and there was sex and there was power, the most successful, the scenes that people responded to most were the ones to do with power. But anyway, the first sex scene, uh, the first line on the page, the first instruction, a stage direction, two characters, right? Crixus and Lucretia. Crixus slams Lucretia. <laughs> Full stop. Oh my God, I'm going, so, <laughs> how, <laughs> exactly, what do, how do I, okay. So I went up to Lucy Lawless, I said, Lucy, <clears throat> um, have you seen that? Uh, Crixus slams Lucretia. And she went, oh, God, not again. <laughs> <laughs> so they'd been there, you know. So I'm thinking, okay. So I, this is how I put it. I said, well, okay. I'm going to make it. Just to keep in mind, I'm talking about the line that we do or don't cross, right? Where is it? Because I'm going, oh, my God, it's got to be raunchy. It's got to uh. So I said, well, you know, I've studied classics. And, um, you know, in, in ancient Greece, the two of the most popular sexual positions for women were known as slippers to the ceiling. <laughs> Or the lioness. Oh, that's interesting, said <laughs> Lucy. Which one would you like to do? She said, I think slippers to the ceiling. Sounds good. So I explained what, as I saw it, what it was and how I was going to do the shot. I said, well, what we do is we start in a big close-up on your profile like this, you know, and you're making, you've got your sex face on and all that. So, <clears throat> and then I'm going to pull out and we see that there's a, a piece of flesh. It's a thigh. And then we realize it's your thigh. And... I have to go there. It's about sex, right? And um, believe me, it's not. It's uh, filming these things is so cut and dried. You've no idea. Anyway, we pull back, and um, it's your thigh, and your. Anyway, I'm describing this, and one of the technicians was looking at this, slipped, and went, "Oh, pile driver." <laughs> so, <clears throat> yes, yes, pile driver. Um, anyway. <laughs> It's just really interesting explaining this to people. I don't think people understand what you have to go through to do these scenes and how you have to segment everything. For a start, in a contract for an actor, especially, well, any, especially actresses, you know, it, with women, it's, there's a lot more vulnerability somehow. Um, this is, I've dealt with it all the time. I have women, I don't have women, sorry. <laughs> um, actresses sitting in the office upset because they have to be naked and I've got a contract and it says their contract full frontal nudity and simulated sex I'm having trouble understanding what part of full frontal nudity doesn't mean full frontal nudity well I didn't think I'd be so naked you know I, I understand it but it has to be there anyway so it's got to be segmented in the contract if you're doing a sex scene you have to describe every single thing that's happening logically so that in this shot we will see your breast, your bum, your hand, your in this shot we will see and you do not diverge from that. It is l totally disrespectful to suddenly be on set and go, hey, can you, that's a line you don't cross. And I, I'm curious to know where, when is it pornography, when is it not? Is it about simulation or not? And when have I crossed the line? Um, so. You get in a room with an actor, really interesting, two actors, and you're describing, you pitch the scene. I mean, you want to make it amazing. It's got to be erotic, but it's got to be raunchy. Um, I did a, one scene. Uh, it was a scene between three actors, two women and a man, main characters. It was gorgeous, very sexy. It involved a woman fully naked with a merkin, let's remember, because um, they're like little triangular bikini bottoms, I suppose, with hair on the... You know what a merkin is, of course. Um, they're standing there, fully, and she poured a jug of water, uh, wine over her body, which I shot at 450 frames a second. Ultra slow motion. You with me? Gorgeous. And it, bound, it cascaded off her breast. It was beautiful. But the content was very, very hot. The man sees this and goes, oh... Can you imagine me trying to explain this to the actress? But anyway, <laughs> sees it and goes in and drinks the wine, sucks it off her breast, okay? I know it's only 8.15 in the morning, but I'm telling you. 
And it was gorgeous. It bounced off. And all of this was fine. We did not cross the line, except in one take, when as he disengaged, his teeth caught her nipple and twinged it. Not allowed to have that. Why is my question. I cut it. I put it in. I thought it was amazing. I thought it just looked so erotic. No, you're not allowed to have that. Can you see? I was confused there. I was going, why this line? Why not another line? So um, it's a really interesting question, too, because there were scenes that, in, for example, you get, I got told uh, it's a brothel. It's slaves and ex people being exploited shoot that. You can have, I could have a woman being thrown through the air by four men, four naked men, uh, and she's naked. I could have that, but I couldn't have uh, a woman on her knees in front of a man looking as though she'd been sort of urinated on or something. I couldn't do that. Now, I get it. I get it. But isn't it interesting that one is considered disrespectful and the other isn't? Because I was told you can't do that. It's disrespectful. And I'm going, yes, but four men throwing her through the air. I'm not sure. Um, so really interesting situations for a director, directing, say, 18 people in what looks like a back in that. There's nothing new under the sun, by the way. That's the other thing I've learned. You've only got to look at Greek erotic, well, pornographic vase paintings to know anything you can think of, been done, baby, I'm telling you. Um, so... Um, then I come to Cabaret and Chicago, and I'm thinking about, wow, uh, sexual revolution, sexual liberation. In Weimar Germany in the 20s, I'm thinking about uh, what I did the research. I've done Chicago three times. Uh, yeah, I've played the MC three times, and I've directed it twice. And the thing about that is, and this is my question, it's not pornography, it's HBO. Who has the power, and how is that played with? In Weimar Germany, there was this huge eruption of sexual activity to do with um, really coming out of the privations after World War I. So we know it was Sin City. Berlin was Sin City. And anything you could think of, the research, the things that are out there that have been discovered lately are amazing. People inventing, get this, a masturbation machine for a man, which involves a, a wheel with, with leather flaps, don't ask me, and you do this. Not my idea of a good night out, but anyway, um, that's just one thing. But what is the focus on the women is really intense. And my take on it was about, it was about currency. What is the currency? I looked at it and I thought, wow, these women, they, um, Anita Berber, famous um, shock poet, shock um, dancer, gloriously naked. There are quotes about her striding in her glorious nakedness. But she died at 29, surrounded by religious icons and used syringes. She, she, the liberation very quickly becomes exploitation, I guess. And that is my question. That is why I look at these shows, I look at you know, Game of Thrones, all of these things, and I go, when and where and how? With um, Chicago, I really wanted to capture the... Look, those women who killed, those merry murderesses who killed um, their husbands' partners, were out of their minds on really bad alcohol and drugs. It wasn't an attractive time. It was prohibition. It was a horrible time. And those people were horrible. And that's why I wanted to load it with people using each other and bring it into the 21st century. And the best example I can give is, in the original Chicago, she, uh, uh, Roxy uh, pretends to be a ventriloquist dummy while... Excuse me. While her lawyer um, speaks for her. Well, we needed something more than that, so I decided that we'd use blow up sex dolls because I'm talking about currency. Because in the end, all these women had in that show, all the characters, was their bodies. That was their currency. The talent was second, the Roxy wanting to be a singer. For me, it was second. I look at that speakeasy air. Uh, um, uh, time and I go, hang on a minute, there was a lot of exploitation there. Are you with me? That was my thing. But of course, so I tried to push it. And was there a line that we crossed? Well, yes, funnily enough, there was a line in Chicago. And it's a strange one, I think. But when we took delivery of the sex dolls, I thought, oh my God, what am I thinking? Because there were a dozen of them. Awful sex dolls. I mean, a sad statement to me. Cheap, terrible. 
but they look beautiful when you did a Busby Berkeley with them and threw them around. So that I wanted to tug at people's sensibilities. Wow, that's a, oh, that's a... But what was tricky and what we had to do was tape up their orifices because it was just the line. In Spartacus and all of those shows, you can have penises, you can't have erect penises. So I guess really what I'm saying is sex is about penises and orifices. <laughs> um, I know I wandered around a bit there, um, but um, yeah, it's this, when you ask me about sex in the industry, I just go, holy shit, there's so much to talk about. Is that it? Oh, well, thank you very much, everybody. I hope that was interesting. Thank you.